Good evening to everybody that's out there, everybody that's in here in the chapel. Wait a second for the band to get situated in their seats, but again, good evening to everybody out there. We want to start out tonight by saying a truism that we already know and that we teach here, and that is that faith is what it's all about. In fact, it's the medium of exchange and the currency of our relationship with God. Faith is 90% courage, 9% tenacity, hanging on there, never letting go, never saying die, and 1% all the rest of that stuff that the whole world seems to think is so important but doesn't seem to mean that much to God, really. And it takes courage. That's why we say faith is 90% courage. It takes courage to face bankruptcy, for example. Or the loss of a job. And say, the promise is that I am the Lord that provideth and go with that instead of what you see confronting you. It takes courage to face a diagnosis of a serious illness, cancer, heart disease, AIDS, whatever, and say in many places in scripture, God promises that he's the Lord that healeth thee. And to go with that instead of this sickness that you're confronted with. There's another aspect of faith that actually was set down by Christ himself. What's important to him, you'll see why, in the way he phrased it. And it's going to show you the importance of him, or to him, in trusting in his authority, in the authority of Christ. Now some of us, and there's too many of us, are concerned about a loved one, family member, partner, husband or wife, parent, child, sibling, relative, friend, that doesn't seem to be interested in God or anything about what's going on with God. And we who know the truth and know what's to come worry and fear for them. This scripture that we're going to in the beginning tonight is going to show, scripture is going to show that a man or woman's faith can save their household and need to know this. 
I want you to go with me into the New Testament, into the book of Matthew. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 8. And then we're going to be going to the book of Luke, chapter 7. But I'll remind you of that. Same passage in each one, two different of the so-called Gospels. Because they say things in a slightly different way to give you a different facet of the diamond here. First in Matthew 8, Jesus is going through his ministry, traveling around in the so-called Holy Land, teaching, preaching, healing. In chapter 8, if you come to verse 5, it says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion. The centurion, in case you don't know, was a middle to high ranking Roman officer, military officer. Not a high like a colonel or general, but let's say like a, a major or a captain. There came unto him a centurion beseeching him, looking for Christ, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented, seriously ill. No hesitation. Jesus says to him, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion answered and he said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And then the centurion goes on to tell his take on the situation. For I am a man under authority. Remember, he's a military officer. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go. And he goeth. And to another, come. And he cometh. And to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. Now, I don't want you to get sidetracked here in what he's saying here. Because it almost sounds like he's saying, who's the boss of who? Or, you know, who's not the boss of who? And that's not what he's saying here. He's saying in a situation where their authority is given, things get done. Jesus responds to this. And he says in the 10th verse, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. And he said to them that followed, he looked at the ones that were following him, and he said, verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. If you remember the teaching on the resurrection that was mixed in with the teaching, teaching on the errors of Easter tradition, you remember there's a part that says that Christ said of himself, he said, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. Anybody remember that? Okay. This is what we're talking about here. Before we clinch this one, I want you to jump with me over into the book of Luke. Same passage, same story. A little bit more detail. A little bit more meaning in regards to the way we started out this message about a person's faith saving their loved ones or their household. Chapter 7 in Luke. Are we there? Chapter 7 in Luke. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, remember he's teaching, preaching, he entered into Capernaum, and a certain centurion's servant who was dear unto him. I want you to underline that. Here's the key phrase here. Who was dear unto him somebody he loved and that would qualify to brother, sister, husband, wife, child, father, mother, relative, good friend. A certain centurion servant who was dear unto him, so underline that, highlight it, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, the centurion, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant, asking Christ to come and heal him. 
And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this, the centurion. For he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. More detail here than in the other one. Sounds like a man who is on the right track. Then Jesus went with him, and when he was not far from the house, he's going to go heal this beloved servant. The centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter into my roof. Wherefore neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But just say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Remember, all authority in heaven and earth is given to Christ. So he's trusting. If he's got all the authority, if he says, be healed, it's going to happen. That's what he's talking about. That's the essence. That's the trust and faith that's going on here. For I also am a man set under authority, having an, uh, under me soldiers. And I say to one, go, and he goeth. And another, come, and he cometh. To my servant, do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and he turned about. Remember, there's people following him. He's confronted with the centurion. He turns around and talks to the people that are with him. And said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And in the 10th verse it says, And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant, the beloved servant, whole, that had been sick. In the other passage, I skipped ahead, I didn't get to it, it says, In that self-same hour. That means while he was speaking forth faith, trusting Jesus, the servant, the beloved one, the household member, was healed at that moment. So we can see in this passage an important thing here that you need to know. If you're worried about your family, somebody that just doesn't seem to be interested, it behooves you to stay in faith and remain in faith. God just might save your loved ones for your faith. He didn't do it for the servant. Do I need to point that out? It's a servant had nothing to do with what's going on. The servant was loved by his, his master. His, the head of his house and was acting in faith and for that faith the servant was healed. Now last week we taught a lesson a profound one on the great work that Christ did when he came here to do what he did to buy our forgiveness by taking God's wrath for us on himself. And in spite of the suffering price paid, in sacrifice and in obedience to the Father, I told you, remember this, he still sees the sparrow fall. And he knows the hairs on your head. These are scriptural promises that are in the Bible. He knows you. When Moses was on Mount Sinai, when he was going up to see what this burning bush was up on the mountain, God didn't say, hey, you. Like my mentor used to point out. And he didn't say, hey, shepherd. He said, Moses, he knows you, and he knows where you are. And if you're in trouble, or if you're in darkness, he knows that too. We're going to go together now into the book of Psalms. We're going to go to Psalm 139 first. And we're going to show you that God has got you covered is the, what I would call, ultimate security blanket. Let me join you. Go into the book of Psalms 139. Well, 
I'll join you eventually. This one I didn't mark because I know where it is. I just can't find it tonight. Okay, here we are. Psalm 139. This is a psalm that was written by David. And it's going to be easy to see when we get into this why David came to be known by God as a man after God's own heart. This psalm starts out by saying, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. And I'm saying, I'll say, Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. He knows your ups and downs. Thou understandest my thought afar off. He knows. He does know that. And remember we've taught here, he reads the heart. Thou understandest my thought afar off. And listen to this. Thou compassest, and circle that. Thou compassest my path and my lying down. Path representing your daily walk in faith, your spiritual walk in the day. And my lying down, you're going to rest at night. Same thing as saying day and night. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, day and night he's there, and art acquainted with all my ways. He knows, I repeat, circle all my ways. Art acquainted with all my ways, says it right there. He knows all about you. Fifth verse. Thou hast beset me behind, circle that behind. And before, circle before, and hath laid thine hand upon me. You know the saying, somebody's got your back? Well, God's got your back and your front. It says it right here. Thou hast beset me, that's put, surrounded me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. And he's amazed at that fact. And he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. And then he makes a remarkable statement. He says, whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? I can't even get away from you. And this is a closely akin to the promise that we teach here that's throughout the scripture where it says, I will never leave you or forsake you. That's the promise. I'll never leave you or forsake you. Indeed, you can't get away from him. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, and I don't care if that's the first, the third, the seventh heaven. Some people think there's different levels of heaven. If I ascend, if I go up and ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, and I've done that at least twice big time in my life, once in the war, where I served with the 1st Battalion, 9th Marines, highest casualty rate in the United States Marine Corps. Look it up, it's a fact. And again, when I had cancer, when I was in the hospital for most of five months, near to death several times, and a million other times throughout my life in little ways that I've stupidly placed myself there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. You go to heaven, he's there. You make your bed in hell, he's there. And he carries it to an extreme here. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, what's another way of saying that? in the middle of nowhere, right? If I go into the middle of nowhere, 
Say it again. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Circle a right hand. This is one of the reasons I'm in mission, I'll make up a word, in mission to teach, to point things out. If you don't know it, the right hand of God represents his hand of power. It doesn't have as much meaning as if you understand that and see this here. Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand, the hand of power, shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, We've all been there. Some of you may be there right now. Surely the darkness shall cover me. Even the night shall be light about me. Now we're not going there tonight. We teach a whole lesson in the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah 50, where it says, the blessed man who's doing everything right, who obeys the voice of God's servant, without any pause or preamble says, finds himself in darkness. You're going to be tested. It's part of the trip. But the darkness does come on you. In that passage, we learn the lesson. We're not going there tonight, but you call on the name of the Lord. And we learn the lesson that don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light, which is one of my sister's favorite passages. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. We also teach in Psalm 112. There's a passage in there that says, to the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. When we say the upright, we're talking about those that are acting in faith, trusting God, because when you do that, you get God's attention, He looks at you, he puts Christ's righteousness on you, and that's the true meaning of being justified. And he's being made just like God, or being just, or being righteous, or in this case, the upright. Not by what you do, other than acting in faith, trusting God, he puts that on you. So to those that are that qualify, he says, there ariseth light in the darkness. I want you to go with me into the book of Isaiah. We're going to chapter 43 in Isaiah. Now remember the main topic right now is the security that is in Christ through faith is what's going on here. You just catalog a bunch of stuff, get ready to catalog a bunch of more stuff here. Chapter 43, Isaiah. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Now again, what's my job here? point things out. You could read that and pass right over it and not get anything out of that, what I've read so far. But there's something there. Jacob, when he was born in the early part of his life, was a conniving heel catcher. That's what his name means. And to me it says, saith the Lord that created thee. That means he takes you where you are. And Jacob is God molded him through life, through his faith walk. And another point in, in his life comes to wrestle with a, an angel of the Lord, asking him to bless him. And he fights with the angel all night long until the angel finally does some kung fu on him and puts his leg out of joint and, and then he lets him go and blesses him and lets him go. And Jacob walked thereafter the rest of his life with a limp. But God changed his name. He's changed his name to Israel, which means a prince who has power with God. So what's being said here is that thus saith the Lord that created thee, he takes you where you are, 
And he that formed thee, O Israel, whatever you have become, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. And we just taught lessons about the kins, kins, having trouble, kinsman redeemer. And last week, the price that was paid in redeeming us. He says it right here, way back in the Old Testament, centuries before. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Remember? Moses, not his shepherd. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. He knows you. I mean, are you getting more and more convinced that he knows you? And then listen what he says. It's going to bring to mind a song that we sing here. We sang it last week, I think. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. At the risk of losing the moment here, I want to tell you a story. Of my pastor, Dr. Scott, used to teach it when he was a little kid, little kid, six, seven years old probably. He was preaching to his friends about uh, the, the fiery furnace that the three were thrown into. And, they, and this furnace that was pumped up really hot and then the king looked in there and saw them, the one that wanted them to get burned up, and he saw them walking around. They weren't even hurt. They came out, and they were not even burned. There wasn't even, uh, like it says, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And they asked him, and you know, is that true? And Dr. Scott, as a child, said, they didn't even have smoke on them. You know? So That's what's being said here. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. And this is a type of Christ. I have redeemed thee. And he says, thy Savior. Come down to the fifth verse. Fear not, for I am with thee. Through all that, through the waters, through the rivers, through the fire. And he's saying in essence again, I repeat myself, but it bears repeating. If you're in the darkness, if you're in trouble, if you're in need, promises, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. God is indeed the ultimate and real security blanket. And that's my message tonight. And it's offering time. This is your first time listening or your first time here. You're not expected to participate in this. We teach, indeed we teach here, don't give unless you've been taught. You make a value judgment on the teaching and then you give accordingly. And that's the true meaning of the word worship, which is a contraction of two words, worth and ship. That's where you put your worth. Now I believe our address is up on the screen. And for the offertory we're going to have uh, just something about that name. Listen to the words.
someday somebody will get inspired and write a couple of more verses to that song because it's, I think, such a pretty song, but it's always over too quick for me. So I hope everybody got something out of this message tonight. I know I did. No matter where you go, heaven or hell, out in the middle of nowhere, if you're in the darkness or not, if you're in the water, if you're in the fire, wherever you are, he's there. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And that's one of the main promises we cling to lovingly. And we'll teach more about that when we teach on uh, Psalm 91 soon. But everyone, everybody, you keep tuning in to the teaching. Listen, if you like what you hear, welcome. Welcome home. Join us. Come back next week for more teaching of God's Word. And uh, we may do some things for Father's Day on that on that message. I haven't, uh, haven't decided yet as, as God directs. So everybody out there, stay in faith. We're going to sing our, sing our theme song, which is Keep on Walking in Faith, which is what it's all about. And we'll see everybody next week. So take it away. Well, I searched and I searched for all my life to I wondered if I'd ever find my way. Walking in the light of the Lord. Walking.